Hey everybody, Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. So, I don't know about you, but uh, feeling the change in the air right now. And it's not just because there are thunderstorms going on outside. There is going to be some big changes ahead here right now, and it's going to be largely associated with what's going on today. Part of that is due to severe weather. We do have a nice little cold front that's going to be set up over the Great Lakes and it's going to be draping across the eastern half of the country here, especially if you're east of the Mississippi. But what's notable is what's going to happen after that for this region here. Also, of course, we're still going to be watching what's going on out west. We still have some monsoon flow. Things have slowed down just a little bit over there. And then, of course, we still have the heat wave that's going on towards the southern plains that we'll be talking about as well. But in regards to severe weather today, we do have a severe thunderstorm watch. A couple severe thunderstorm warnings going on right now over towards the mid-Atlantic. This is going to be ongoing for at least the next few hours towards the region here. You do have to be on the lookout for this little MCS here to kind of be the stage setter for later this evening over towards Kansas where there is an isolated chance of maybe some significant damaging winds. We have that hatch risk right there. You can hear the thunder outside of my house right now. Atlanta's in that marginal risk, so we're going to have some pretty good action over here too. But in any case, though, across the board, looks like it's going to be widespread isolated thunderstorms, if that makes any sense. I wouldn't expect a particularly focused area of severe weather. There's going to be just little clusters of storms here and there all throughout the day. There is a small chance that we could get a tornado or two over towards the mid-Atlantic today. I think chances are low. Obviously, that's why we have the 2%, but the chance is not zero. So it's just a reminder to keep an eye on the sky today. But as we continue to go forward here, we have multiple areas where we're looking at a marginal risk for severe weather. The main threats of that's going to be damaging winds and hail. Tornado threat's going to be pretty low. Slight risk is mainly hail-driven over here towards... Colorado just outside of Denver in the mountainous regions here so as so we continue to go forward on not just day three on but uh on the days on where we're going to be shifting more of our attention I would say over towards the northern plains as we continue to go forward models are kind of leaning into a more active setup towards the northern U.S. as we go forward kind of typical of the La Nina calling card which we've been anticipating a shift towards since we've reached that neutral end zone not too long ago. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the models and go from there. So looking at the models here, of course, we like using the GFS here a lot, but we also like using the Euro. We usually like to do model comparisons here. And it's pretty uh, telling what we have here between the two models. Obviously the Euro only goes to 10 days versus 16 on the GFS. But to see a decent level of model agreement between the two is pretty reassuring obviously with our cold front passing through here this is going to cause the temperatures to drop a little bit some of these models are picking up on this others not so much but we're still um we're still working through it i do think that we're going to see a, a pretty notable difference as we go forward here now another thing that kind of has captured my eye here is not just this little trough that's going to cause this little brief cool down here but also, we're looking at this storm system coming into play, which may increase severe weather chances for not only the Western High Plains, but also we're going to be looking towards maybe the Northern Plains and even the Great Lakes over the course of the next few days. And to follow right behind the system, we have another one that may affect Canada as well, maybe even parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin as well. Still pretty long ways out, 270 hours out, so anything can change with this pretty quickly it could stay further to the north uh, tilt orientation could change the intensity of the storm system but as it stands right now it's something that's moderately notable timing is still a question as well as we continue to go forward but as you can see here we have a pretty active pattern towards the northern tier of the states as we get towards the end of the month and the start of september here as well and then eventually it looks like we do have another storm system that's going to try to sneak in here or at least another area of low pressure at the very least. Of course, at this point, we're at the end of the 16-day period, so it's kind of more or less hearsay as to what happens there. So that being said, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the temperatures here. And as I'm talking about this temperature map here, 
I'm taking my face off the screen because we want to take a look at a couple of different things here. One, I'm going to have the departure from average or um, average temperature anomaly here on the bottom left. And on the bottom right, I'm actually going to have the Euros temperatures here. Because there's a couple interesting things that I've kind of picked up as I was looking at these models a little earlier today. So I'm going to go ahead and move all of these. And as you can see, GFS still keeps us pretty warm for the most part here. There might be some cooler mornings, but for the most part, even though that front comes through, it's almost as if the GFS kind of ignores it. But if we look at the Euro, we see a slightly different picture. It's a little bit cooler, but the most notable thing, if we look on the bottom left, is the departure from average. You can see a lot more blue kind of sneaking in there. So it's kind of interesting what we have going on here between uh, our different parameters even with some of these being linked to the same model here like this uh, temperature anomaly is linked to the GFS but we're still seeing temperatures in some spots at about 90 to 95 which I know is above average for some of these areas so some interesting stuff going on here with the model so don't believe everything that you read I guess is the moral of the story there but in any case though I would still be prepared for some changes here. We've been seeing some changes being expected in the long range for a little bit now. And even though the temperature map isn't really showing it as well as I would have expected it to, I would still be keeping an extra close eye on these areas. So let's go ahead and start looking at some other parameters here in regards to our weather. Bouncing back to severe weather parameters here, obviously one factor that we need is moisture. And we are going to have that as we continue to move forward here there's a couple of things i want you to pay attention to of course as we mentioned before northern plains western high plains are going to be a point of interest as we go further down the line with this model run also with this frontal boundary preparing to pass through you're going to see a decrease in the dew points over here towards the southeast and even parts of the northeast ohio valley and even mid-atlantic here We've been seeing 50s and 60s pretty consistently throughout the year, so seeing 40s is pretty weird here, but also welcome sight. But notice how we're also starting to get a nice little surge of moisture out all the way towards North and South Dakota here at this point. I do think the crops are playing a part in that. A little bit of transpiration going on, but watch what happens as we get towards that time frame that I mentioned that's about 144, 150 plus hours out. Look at the moisture surge we start to get and how it pushes out to the west here. This is what also kind of solidifies my confidence a little bit more in the potential for severe weather as we go further down the line here. And then as we go even further along here, we start to see that moisture build back up out to the east. But also we see an increase in moisture out towards those northern states once again. So again, really thinking that business is going to pick up around the northern US as we go further throughout this time frame here into next month even. So it might have to even be on watch for Labor Day severe storms possibly as we go further along here. Eventually, of course, out here towards the east, moisture builds back in, of course. Out towards the west, we're kind of flip-flopping a little bit. I think with that storm system that's coming in as we re rewind here, it's gonna bring a little bit of moisture in. We do have some monsoon of flow that's gonna start to increase a bit more as we continue to go throughout the run here especially over the course of the next five to seven days after that we kind of slow down briefly but i think we're going to be kind of intermittent at this point as we go further along past the 10-day period we start to see an increase in moisture content as well so i do think we might have more notable notable events as we get into september towards let's say the southwest fortunately for the northeast where we've been having issues with or northwest excuse me where you've been having issues with our fire danger here that's there's not much in the way beyond that system that's going to bring relief here we want to see those dew points rise a little bit more so that way the air becomes more moist and those fires can't thrive as much we do see an increase in those dew points but really i would want to see those getting into the 40s into the 50s it's still better than what we've had though so that's a plus so switch over now and we're going to look at a couple of different models here we're going back to the uh double screen here on the bottom left corner here we're actually going to go ahead and take a look at our instability this is also from the euro and we're going to use that in combination with our lightning flash density and another thing that kind of solidifies that severe weather potential increasing over time is as we begin to move these both in motion 
you can see, especially as we go further down the line here, especially over towards the northern states, let's say once we get to that 140 hour time frame and beyond, look at how much instability that will have matched along with the lightning flash density here. The brighter the colors, the more lightning flashes you're having per day here. And we have a lot of them. Like over here, for example, this is on Friday. We're seeing five, seven, nine flashes a day. The brighter the colors get, the more flashes we get. This is towards 168 hours. So this would be Saturday night into Sunday morning, getting up to 12. So that's pretty, that's a notably high number, even getting up to like 15 in some of these spots over here towards Montana. So as time goes on, you can continue to see that we have a lot of activity over towards the northern states. Like I said, this is typical of us shifting into the La Nina pattern during this time of year. More active weather usually is going to be towards the north. Not saying that the south can't get any shower storm activity. In fact, we're expecting to, especially as we go throughout the first part of the week here. But as time goes on, the pattern's going to quiet down a little bit for the region here. We do, of course, like I said before, have to watch out for that monsoonal flow. I do have my concerns with uh, potential dry thunderstorms a little further out towards the west, but the lightning flash densities aren't quite as high unless you get all the way over towards areas like maybe Oregon, Washington, maybe even. But of course, I do think that's going to be in conjunction with that storm system that's coming through. And then the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and take a look at how it all comes together with our precipitation forecast here. Cold front coming through today, obviously. We're going to have our share of shower and storms over here towards the east. That's where the mo majority of our action is going to be. As we continue to go forward here, we'll see the picture quiet down just a little bit briefly before that next storm system rolls in towards the end of this week. Then after that, business really starts to pick up as we go further along here. We get towards 180 hours in particular, you start to see more organized shower storm activity, potentially even severe. As we go along, start to see that monsoon will flow out towards the southwest. And then little by little, we're going to start to see notable pattern shift, more organized severe weather out towards the Midwest here and the northern states once again. Isolated showers and storms, typical summertime setup out towards the east as we start to get out of that little cold snap that we started to get into. And that's pretty much going to round out how our month ends and really it's going to be how we introduce September as well. So that being said, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like, hit that subscribe button and also hit that share button too. So that being said, if you want further updates, make sure you get that notification bell on. Until then, I will see you guys next time and have an awesome rest of your evening.